What is the permutation formula and why does it work? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Here is the permutation formula. It tells us how many permutations there are of R objects from a collection of N objects. And if you don't know what a permutation is, a permutation is just an ordering of objects. So we're counting the number of ways we can order things. And here we see this beautiful formula. Instead of this NPR notation, you might also see it written sometimes like this. So just keep that in mind. But regardless, let's get into some examples to see why this formula works. The first case we're going to touch on is the case where R is equal to N. So here's an example of that. How many ways can a standard 52 card deck be arranged? So here, we're trying to figure out how many ways we can arrange 52 objects in a collection of 52 objects. So this is a case where R is equal to N. But we're not going to use the formula just yet. Let's just apply some logic. We're trying to count the number of arrangements of a 52 card deck. Obviously, some card has to be first, some card has to be second, some card has to be third, some card has to be fourth, and so on, all the way down to the third to last card, second to last card, and the last card. Now, how many possibilities are there for the first spot? How many cards can be first? Well, any one of the 52 cards can be first, so there are 52 options for the first card. What about the second card? How many options are there for the second card? Well, one card has already gone first, so 51 cards remain. There are 51 options for the second card. And then what should happen between these two numbers? Should they be added, multiplied, subtracted? What should happen? Well, for every single one of the 52 possibilities for the first card, there are 51 possibilities for the second card, which means that these numbers should be multiplied. It's like if there were three sizes of sodas and there were five flavors. How many possible options are there? Well, for each one of the three sizes, there are five flavors. For the small size, there are five flavors we could pick. For the medium size, there are five flavors we could pick. And for the large size, there are five flavors we could pick. That's three times five. So that's how we know we're using multiplication in this counting problem. Now let's continue. How many cards could be third? Well, we've already used up two of the cards, so now 50 cards remain. There are 50 options for the third card, and this pattern continues. There will be 49 options for the fourth card, and eventually we'll get all the way down to having just three options, and then just two options, and then just one last remaining card that could go in the last spot. So that is the number of ways a standard 52 card deck can be arranged. And it can be written much more easily as what's called 52 factorial. That's what this exclamation point means. It means take this integer and multiply it by every integer less than it all the way down to 1. And if we tried using our formula, we could verify this answer. In this case, n and r would both be 52. So what we would get when we use the formula is 52 factorial in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we would have 52, that's n, minus 52, that's r, factorial. This, of course, is equal to 52 factorial divided by 0 factorial, and 0 factorial is defined to be equal to 1. So that just leaves us with 52 factorial. And let me just write that down. 0 factorial is equal to 1. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of why this formula works when r is equal to n. Now let's check out the other possibility, that r is not equal to n. This is a situation where we want to know how many ways we can order some objects from a greater collection. So here's a question about that. How many ways can four cards be dealt from a 52 card deck if order matters? So we're assuming that the order in which the cards are dealt is important, which means we're trying to count permutations. Because remember, in a permutation, the order of the objects matters. So again, let's just try using logic to answer this question. Four cards are being dealt from a deck of 52. Some cards going to be first, some cards going to be second, some cards going to be third, and some cards going to be fourth. 
How many options are there for the first card? Well, every card in the deck could go in the first spot, so there are 52 options. And then what about for the second spot? Well, some cards already gone first, so there are only 51 cards that could go second. Then there are 50 cards that could go third, and 49 cards that could go fourth. And of course, these are all getting multiplied. So this is the number of ways that four cards can be dealt from a 52 card deck if order matters. And just to make it clear, I'll point out up here, in this case, n is equal to 52, that's the size of the collection of objects, the 52 cards, and r is equal to 4. This is the number of objects from the collection that we are ordering. Now this, of course, is not equal to 52 factorial, but it does look kind of similar to 52 factorial. If we had 52 factorial, what could we do to change this 52 factorial to make it equal to this? Well, they are equal all the way up to that times 49. So if we wanted to make this equal to this, then we would have to divide out everything else. So here's what I mean by that. We would have to divide by 48 times 47, times 46, and so on, of course, all the way down to 2 times 1. If we divide this by this, then what we'll be left with is just the answer we got in green above, 52 times 51 times 50 times 49. And again, that's because everything else is going to cancel out with what we divided by. But what is this expression equal to? This 48 times 47 times 46 and so on. Well, of course, that's just 48 factorial. And what is 48 factorial? Well, it's equal to 52, the collection size, minus 4, the amount of objects we're ordering, factorial. So let's go ahead and replace that. And then, of course, in the numerator all along, we've just had 52 factorial, so let's go ahead and rewrite that as well, just so this really looks like the formula that I showed you originally. And there we go. Hopefully, you can see where the formula is coming from now. The number of ways we can order our objects from a collection of n is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. If you haven't worked with factorials much, these numbers get very big very quickly. 52 factorial, for example, is an absolutely gargantuan number. Now, before we go, let me give you some example problems, some practice problems. Here's the first one. How many five-digit codes can be created from the digits 0 through 9 if repetition isn't allowed? So in this example, you're not allowed to reuse digits in the codes. So it works just like the previous examples we have done. In our examples with the deck of cards, we were not allowed to reuse a card. That's why the number of options was decreasing in each position. So try to figure this one out and let me know what you get in the comments. Again, it's just like the problem we just did. But here is a slightly different example that you cannot use the formula for. We didn't go over a problem quite like this, but I think it's easier than the problems we did do, so just try to use some logic and figure out this problem. How many five-digit codes can be created from the digits 0 through 9 if repetition is allowed? Let me know what you get for both of these questions down in the comments, and I will, of course, leave these solutions in the description. With that said, I hope this video helped you understand the permutation formula and why it works. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I'm not